Maryland gets a huge pickup in the portal. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And these days, new potential hires can feel like high-stakes wagers for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs help find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Maryland got exactly what they needed and transfer Rodney Rice. The Maryland Terrapins start the transfer portal in the basketball season, basketball transfer portal, and the exact way that they needed to start with this kid, Rodney Rice. I love Rodney Rice. I think it's a really good ad, and I think it's exactly what Maryland kind of needs right now in the portal. I think it's exactly what we want. I think we expected to get him. He was crystal balled to Maryland for, I guess, about a week now, and everyone kind of expected us to get him, and it made it did make a lot of sense for him to come to Maryland, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know about his background and where he comes from and kind of why is it Maryland overall, but let me guys, let me give for some of you guys that don't know a little bit of background about Rodney Rice first before I get into why exactly I think he's exactly what the Terps need, but Rodney Rice is from the DMV area, so that's a big reason why it made a lot of sense, and that makes sense for him to previously be at Virginia Tech, because of course, Virginia Tech is close to the DMV as well. For the people that actually know Virginia, or actually know the DMV, you know that Virginia Tech is not technically in the DMV, but it's pretty close to the DMV area, but he originally attended Bullis for um, his first couple years of high school. Bullis is a private school, pretty good. It's a solid athletic um, school. And then they're actually really good at basketball this year. Um, But in the past, they've been like solid. They weren't anything crazy, but they were a good program. But then he transferred to DeMatha for junior and senior year, which I bet a lot of you guys know. There's been a ton of great players that have gone through DeMatha that are in the NBA, that are in college basketball. To just name a few right now, you think Victor Oladipo, You think the Grant brothers, like Jeremy Grant. uh, You think Markel Fultz. And then in college basketball right now, Hunter Dickinson. And then, of course, Maryland's own Jameer Young from last year. Jameer Young did attend DeMatha as well. And there was like this cold spell where Maryland couldn't add or couldn't get a DeMatha kid. But he went to DeMatha for his last two years of high school, which of course, DeMatha is a powerhouse, one of the better programs in the country year in and year out. They just have such a basketball tradition there. They have so many good players that come through that program that end up being pretty high level players, usually at the college level and at the pro level, which I like. I like guys that come from that type of program. And if you guys remember, Mike Jones, who was previously on our staff, who is now the head coach at Old Dominion, was the head coach at DeMatha a couple of years. So a lot of people thought that that was going to be the reason that Rodney Rice came. They thought that Mike Jones was going to be a huge part of the reason that Rodney Rice was going to transfer to Maryland. And it made way too much sense at the start. It was like, okay, he was coached by Mike Jones in high school. It sounds like they have a good relationship. It sounds like Mike Jones is going to push for him to go to Maryland. But it was like, oh, Mike Jones left to go to Old Dominion. What does this mean for our Rodney Rice stakes? I wasn't sure for a while. I didn't know if we were still going to land him because sometimes those assistant coach, uh, those relationships that they have with the assistant coaches is so important. Important. Like sometimes that's more important than the relationship they have with just the head coach and football or in basketball overall. But it sounded like Maryland was going to be the school for him anyway, even with Coach Jones leaving for Old Dominion. And I'm sure there were plenty of schools that wanted Rodney Rice. I think he still has 
three years of eligibility remaining. So he still has a good amount of time to still play college basketball and still develop into what he's going to develop. But I wasn't sure if he was going to choose Maryland after Mike Jones left. And of course, he attended Virginia Tech where he committed out of high school, which I talked about a little bit. And something clearly went wrong there. I still don't know what. If you guys know what went wrong, let me know. I've looked around, but I don't know what happened. But there was something clearly that like fell through. Something happened. He played his freshman year. He played in, I think it was eight games his freshman year. But a big part of that was because he was injured, not because he like wasn't going to play. Like They expected him to come in and be a guy for them kind of right away. And he did do something really good things in the game action that he was uh that he played in but the he didn't play last year for Virginia Tech and left the program so there was definitely something going on there and I don't know exactly what it is but something happened that led him to leave the program I don't know if it was something with the coaching I don't know if there was a disagreement among the players I have really no idea what happened. I don't know if it just wasn't a good fit and he decided, let me take the year off and train and and get mental mentally right maybe. I have really no idea. Those are all just guesses. I don't want to say there's a particular reason why, but something definitely happened that led him to decide to leave the program and enter the transfer portal as soon as it opened. And, of course, Maryland just landed Rodney Rice. And let me get into why I think Rice now is the perfect fit for what Maryland needs in terms of the landscape of college basketball, in terms of how we performed last year. First of all, I'm really high on Rodney Rice. I've seen him play through high school, college. I've seen him play a lot of basketball. And I've seen him live. And I think he's exactly the kind of player that Maryland needs. First of all, he can shoot the ball. And everybody knows that's a Maryland fan right now, and people that aren't a Maryland fan know, we need guys that are able to make shots. Last year, the shot making was not pretty. The three-point shooting was pretty horrendous. And that's exactly what Rodney Rice does well. He can make shots. He can make three-point shots. And he should be able to do it at a high level. That was a big part of what he did in high school. And even when he was at Virginia Tech, he was able to make shots. Even though the percentage wasn't like super high, he was able to come in and make shots right away. And I think that's a big part of why he's a really good fit for Maryland basketball this year. But I think he has a complete game. And he's he's not a freakish athlete. He's not the guy that's going to like go and jump out of the gym or do anything crazy explosive. That's not what he is. He's one of those guys that knows how to play basketball at a really high level and is really skilled at it and has a complete game. He can get to the rim. He can shoot the mid-range. He can shoot the three-point shot. I like those guys like that. He's a good athlete still. He's not a great athlete, but I think he's a good athlete, and I think that's the type of guy Maryland needs. I don't think we need a freak guy that might lack some of the skill and stuff like that. I think we need more of a guy that is really skilled, that's going to be in the program for a while, that can start potentially for the next three years and see what we can do with that. I think that's the type of guy that we need. I love the fit also because of the eligibility. What I talked about, him still having three years of eligibility is a big deal because you're still going to get a lot of use out of him. He's still got three years of him to develop. So even if he's not, he's not going to be the player that he's going to be in year one at Maryland. And also, of course, with the losses that we sustained so far this offseason, he was really needed to come in and make an impact. We needed a guy that was going to make an impact at the guard position. I talked about maybe Doug McDaniel. I talked about the Gillespie guy who actually just visited Maryland. That's a topic for a different day. I don't know what's going on with that, if that's something that we actually have a chance to land. Or, and then we also lost Jonathan Lamoth in the portal. And so we've lost different guys and there's different guys also in the portal, but there, we've lost different guys at the guard position. I think Lamoth was expected to get rotational minutes next year at the guard spot. Jameer Young, of course, was our first team all big 10 guy. And of course he just graduated, but you needed a guy to replace that production. And I really think Rodney Rice can do that because watch some of the clips you can find online. 
Rodney Rice against I, th- I think it's when he plays Duke. There's a couple teams that he plays, um, not last, not this year, but last year, or I I don't know if you would consider that two years ago or last year, but last basketball season, not this past season, the last basketball season, he had some games where he showed flashes of like, oh yeah, he's going to be a guy for Virginia Tech, and I think that those flashes are going to start to become the reality at Maryland. This guy is really skilled. I think he really fits in. I think he's going to be the two. I don't know exactly how Kevin Willard will do it. He's listed as a two, but I know he can play the one. So we'll see if Deshaun Harris-Smith is more of the two next year or if Deshaun Harris-Smith takes on the point guard ability, um, takes on the point guard spot or if we get bring in another guard. That will be interesting. That will be a huge tell to see kind of how the starting lineup starts to form up. But I think Rodney Rice was a perfect get, and I think he fits in with Maryland basketball and what Kevin Willard needs to do and what we need to improve on. I want to talk about the Maryland quarterback competition a little bit. I will get into that after this ad from Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlights is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The North Carolina Tar Heels can only be described as the Armada. The one seed is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they secured a spot in the Sweet 16 this Thursday against Alabama in the NCAA tournament. Their favorite pick by many to make a run to the championship. The Iowa State. Iowa State Cyclones can be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch, and they've really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They have a date with Illinois this Thursday in the Sweet 16. The NC State Wolfpack are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in their first two games in the tournament. Wins over Texas Tech, Oakland have set them up to play Marquette in the Sweet 16. They say win life, go rogue, and that's exactly what the Golden Grizzlies have done. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or find the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Say goodbye to your busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game of the tourney. I know a lot of us have horrible brackets right now and all just kind of went into shambles, but FanDuel has got you. Whether you're betting on a big upset or one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports bar. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first dollar if your first $5 bet wins. That sounds like a really good deal to me. You guys have to take advantage of that. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, whatever you want to do. It's March Madness. You you, I know a lot of you guys want to throw a little bit of money around, and you can pick who's going to win it all with the future bet. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. So I want to talk a little bit about the Maryland quarterback battle. I have two points kind of to make. I think Maryland should have a real quarterback competition, but I also think it can be it's going to be really hard to to figure out the starter. Let me kind of explain what I mean by these two different things. I think the quarterback competition has to happen for Maryland football. I think we need it. I think it's going to be a huge, a really helpful exercise in finding out exactly who is the best player for the job, who's going to be the most confident guy, who it's just going to be a mixture of things. This competition really helps show out who is the best player for the job. That's why I think a quarterback competition does a lot of what the quarterback will actually be asked to do in the game. The competition is about pressure every single day, and you have to go to work and you have to beat out a guy, and I think that relates a lot to what you're going to see in the game. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot on their shoulders during a game, and a quarterback competition really helps to see – It really helps see who's going to handle that pressure the best in practice, of course, but also I think that leads to who will, who will handle it best in the game and whoever can perform best under pressure in practice and looks the best between MJ Morris, Billy Edwards and Cameron edge. 
I think it'll be a big indicator of who should be the starter. I don't want someone to like, I don't want coach Loxley to be like already kind of a pre-picked guy. I know he's going to go and say it's a competition, but there's many examples. I know you guys know of all these different quarterback battles that have happened over the years and that are like quarterback battles. Like we all know who the starter is going to be. And we all know it's, realistically it's not a quarterback competition but the coach will say that just because they like competition in the building it makes a lot of sense coaches will say every position group is a competition other coaches will say this is our starter it just depends on who the coach is what they value what they think but that's my whole point around what i think coach Loxley needs to do to handle this i think you got to treat this fairly because i don't think there is like a clear answer i know a lot of people want to say mj morse and the more and more I think about it, I don't think MJ Morris is a clear answer. I think he's a good football player, and I'm not saying he's not going to be the starter, and I'm not saying he might not be the best guy to be the starter, but I don't think it's like black and white MJ Morris should be the starter. I don't think it's clear at all. I think these guys really need to battle it out like a complete – Coach Lawson goes in with a complete empty mind and saying, rep by rep, who is our best guy? And that is not easy to do. It's not easy to pick out the best guy out of the three guys because they're all going to be different play styles and you're going to run an offense differently. Edwards, more of a runner. While you got MJ Morris can do a little bit of both. Cameron Edge, more of a pocket pass. And it could just depend on how Coach Lee views those styles. But I really hope that it's a fair competition going in because after watching the bowl game and stuff, I wasn't sure Cameron Ed shouldn't have been our backup quarterback last year. And I don't know if people are going to disagree with that or some people think that's crazy. But I don't think I was super impressed with Billy Edwards' ability to throw the ball. I know he was the MVP of the game, but I'm not sure that he shouldn't have been the backup quarterback. So I don't want there to be, like, any politics or anything going in beforehand that's like, oh, he's experienced, he's the older guy, he should be the starter. I want it to come down – Who is the best player for our offense? And I still think our offense runs through the receiver room right now. Of course, I want to run through Roman Hemby a little bit more, but I think our biggest strength is the receiver room, and I think we have a great unit in the Big Ten. So it's going to be about who is going to be able to get the ball to, to those receivers. I think it's going to be really hard to figure out. But I don't want this to be a a situation to be like, Oh, like this, this is a quarterback competition. But you guys know those examples, like I said, of when it's like a fake quarterback competition. I really don't want that to be the case. Remember, like Trevor Lawrence and Jacksonville Jaguars when Trevor Lawrence was a rookie? This was my first kind of thought that came into my head. And Urban Meyer was talking about how he was in a competition with Gardner Minshew and they were both getting first team reps and yes Trevor Lawrence is rookie I'm not saying it should have been handed to him but everybody knew that Trevor Lawrence was going to start week one so it was like why are we trying to make it harder on Trevor Lawrence my point is if you already know who the guy is just go ahead and say it after a couple weeks don't delay it if it's clear you know who the guy is but I really don't think coach Loxley knows I don't think he should know I think this has to be complete up a complete competition I don't want it to be a competition that's like fake and it's like oh it might be this guy I want it to be a real quarterback competition also selfishly because it gives me a lot to talk about when it's not clearly the starter I think the spring game is going to be huge for it I'm excited for the quarterback competition because I think the pressure of it is really going to be similar to the pressure of the game situation so I'm curious what happens in this quarterback competition I think it'll be pretty interesting overall Maryland football adds another commit. I will tell you about Maryland's new commit after this ad from LinkedIn Jobs. These days, new potential hires can feel like high-stakes wagers for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs help find the right people for your team faster and for free. Guys, trust me on this. It's a lot easier and it's a lot faster to be able to find people on LinkedIn jobs. 
And a lot of people need jobs right now, like always. And if you want to find someone amazing, you can find someone really cool for your job or company. LinkedIn Jobs help find the right qualified candidates you want to talk to faster, like a lot faster. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Maryland basketball adds another 2025 commit in Julian Horton. I wanted to make sure to give props to this kid for committing to Maryland and give him a little bit of a segment, a safety from Bel Air, Maryland. He attends Bel Air High School and is another good player to add to the 2025 class and to add to the Maryland Terrapins team eventually. He's not a guy that's like, oh, He's a five star or four star. Like, he's not that type of player. He doesn't have that type of ranking status. I'm not saying he's not as good as any of those guys. I'm just saying more like he doesn't have that type of ranking in terms of the recruiting websites. But we know that the recruiting websites aren't always right. We know that there's guys that are diamond in the roughs. And I think Maryland's done a pretty good job at finding a lot of those guys. If you think of the guys that have gone to the NFL over the last couple of years for Maryland football, a lot of those guys were like, three-star, kind of normally recruited guys, not anything crazy out of high school. But Rivals does have him ranked as a three-star, so it's not like, oh, this guy's a nobody. Like, he's a going to – he's a good player. And I read an article about him, and it was interesting how he talked about Maryland football staff and everything. He talked about Coaches R was a big reason why he chose Maryland. So it sounds like Coach is doing a really good job of uh, just building relationships with these – players but he talked about coaches are and what he brought and him as a coach and he also talked about how maryland which is a common kind of thing that i'm hearing between the recruits i've talked to a couple of guys and they've said the same couple of things and that maryland's preach that they that they think this player can be a versatile type of player and that's what they said just to julian horton it sounds like it sounds like they that they talked about how you can play we're in different spots on our defense, we think, and we think we can develop you into a guy that can move around into a chess piece. And people think that our, I think that's, I like that. I like guys that can move around, whether it's from safety to slot corner to maybe playing linebacker. Like there's different ways to move these guys around to play in the box, to play outside, whatever it is. I like to have athletes that can move around, and I think that's kind of what the game is going to, and I think it's cool to have guys that have versatility and have those type of players. I think of a guy like Glendon Miller this year for us, played a ton of time in the slot corner, stepped in the start at safety when um, Dante was out. I think it makes a lot of sense to have those versatility, those guys that are versatile. Or you think of Tarheep still played the slot, also played the inside. He could do a lot of different things. I think it's really cool to have that type of versatility. So it was cool to hear him talk about that but he's also cousins with colby mcdonald which is kind of like an underrated story about this commitment because a lot of people are just going to say like yeah that's cool but i kind of read more into it in my opinion and my thought about that is family doesn't lie to you so if colby mcdonald was having second thoughts about maryland or like he was like yeah i don't know if you should go here he wouldn't have said to julian horton yes like this is the place to be because i promised I promise you Horton talked to Colby McDonald about it. He's going to talk to his cousin that's at the school. And so I'm sure that he was like, yeah, this is a great place to be, which is a great sign if your cousin and your family members are telling you that it's already there, that it's a good place for you to go and it's going to be the right type of fit for you. Because family, I don't think will lie to you. Or I hope your family wouldn't lie to you or that's not a very good family member. But family is going to be honest with you about that. So I think that speak somewhat i mean i'm not gonna act like it's the biggest thing but i think it's important that the maryland football program is getting that type of kind of talked about like that i know colby mcdonald is going to talk about the program high level to his cousin if he committed here i think that's definitely a good sign and then i turned on the film and it was interesting because i'm not a recruiting expert on this stuff I think I like I like to think I know a lot in that I can like recognize talent if I watch the film. But if you gave me all these different guys, five, four, three star guys, and said differentiate them into high level recruits, like give them stars, it would be hard because a lot of these guys look really good on film. I think a big part of how you get your stars in that kind of status 
is kind of about a lot of it's about like size, how big you are. I think that's a big part of it. I don't think that's all of it. And I think they do a good job with the stars, but it's not easy to like be like, oh, like this guy is a three star right now. Be like, I would have been like, oh, maybe he's a four. Like, I wouldn't really know because he looks really good on film. I think he had really good instincts. He had some really nice interceptions. He played the ball really well, had really good balls, ball skills. And then he also showed a lot of closing speed and just speed overall from that safety spot. So you, I was looking at it, and I'm like, why isn't this guy rated higher? And then I kind of came back and was like, okay, he's definitely small for a safety at about six foot 175 because I think about how big I am right now and I don't think I'm big enough to play college football and I'm about 60 185 and I don't think I would be strong enough or big enough to play college football and I, I know how big the safeties are those guys like Dante for us are about 190 maybe close to taking close to 200 pounds those guys can are heavier and a little bit bigger so he's gonna have to add muscle which is completely fine which most almost everyone does coming into college football so I think that's a big part of his game that he's going to have to work on is adding a lot of muscle. But I, I look at his film, and I'm telling you guys, go check it out. Go check out Julian Horton Tuttle film. It's a really good film, and I'm excited that we add him to our class. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We are every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.